at Leesmars Wuhan University and today our topic is going to be basics of synthetic aperture radar. <coughs> there are two main portions of this lecture. Today we will focus on the first one. By the end of this lecture you will be able to understand basic theory of SAR image formation and some of its basic concepts and we will cover the second portion in our next video. Right, so let's start with the electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, the spectrum is the range of electromagnetic energy that expands uh, from very long wavelength to very short wavelength. Radio waves are of very long wavelength. It can be as big as a soccer ground and can easily cross high buildings. While gamma rays, on the other hand, have one of the shortest wavelengths, which could be a size of an atomic nuclei. Majority of this energy is not visible to us, means we cannot see it with our eyes. The only energy we can see is light, which is just a small portion of the energy among all the other that are out there. Well, you can think of this energy as waves. Imagine this energy is in the form of waves that are propagating, similar to the waves in the ocean. But keep in mind that these waves are moving with the speed of light. So normally, remote sensors are designed to operate at certain division or area in the spectrum based on their application. Microwave sensors work in the range as shown in this green portion uh, in, in this picture, which is much uh, lower frequency than visible and infrared. Like for example, the wavelength of light is 300 to 700 nanometers, while for the microwave it is about um, from 0 0.3 to almost 40 centimeters. Due to this big difference in wavelength, the feature on the Earth's surface appears different in microwave range than in the optical range. So, one of the key reasons to use microwave sensor is that it is not affected by any weather uh, or the time of the day. It can work both uh, day, both at day or at night. And it is also not impeded by most uh, heavy weather conditions as optical sensors are. Right. So there are two main forms of remote sensing observation, passive and active. And passive sensors measures energy reflected or emitted by earth surface. For example, optical and thermal sensors. However, there are some passive microwave sensors called radiometers. They measure energy in the medium of microwave range. On the other hand, an active sensor has its own energy source and the examples are radars and lidars. Now a radar emit a burst of energy, let's call them burst of signals and the same radar receives a part of that signal which is reflected back. Therefore, the active remote sensing in microwave is called radar remote, radar remote sensing. In this lecture, we will only focus on radar remote sensing, particularly synthetic aperture radar, or in short, we, ca we can call it SAR. All right, here are some of the advantages and disadvantages of radar remote sensing over optical remote sensing. As I mentioned before, that uh, the key advantage of radar is that it works both in day and night, irrespective, irrespective of almost all weather conditions. However, optical radar sensing has limitation during night and during cloudy weather. Moreover, radar signals can penetrate vegetation, snow or soil and optical sensors only see what, what's on top of the surface. 
radar has very minimal to none atmospheric effects at uh, and at the end the most important thing is radar is very sensitive to electric and dielectric effects as well as the structure of the object or the surface along these advantages there are some disadvantages too the biggest disadvantages which i think is the information in radar data is very different than optical data therefore sometimes it's very difficult to understand also the speckle effect the salt and pepper effect which we see in radar image makes the information a bit hard to understand or interpret at the end topography is also responsible for some of the image distortion okay uh, here are some of the image as an example to show the difference between a radar and optical image on the left you can see an optical image which cannot see through the clouds and on the right you can see a radar or SAR image which can penetrate which penetrated through the clouds and we can see the earth surface on the same time right and the radar image will look like this black and white and on the other hand the sides are from the optical image so this is the difference between these two images we will discuss them uh, in details later right now let's talk about uh, some of the basics of radar well in a common way radar is actually a distance measuring device now there are two types of radars one that is non-imaging for example for example um, radio altimeter that tells us altitude but we will focus on the imaging radar in this lesson in in imaging radar radar is side looking because if it if it is down looking as you can see on the left of this picture you won't be able to tell the difference between point a and point b now see the picture on the left side the signal will reach point a and point b at the same time and it will return to the receiver at the same time also this is the reason why you won't be able to uh, tell the difference between them or you won't be able to differentiate between them however on the side on the right side um, the signal will take a different time to reach uh, the receiver so uh, in this way you know okay let's take it that way that the time uh, takes for the signal to reach point a and point b will be different similarly the time to receive the signal will also be different in that way we will be able to differentiate between these two points and we we will also be able to differentiate between the distance of these two points right so a radar basically has a transmitter a receiver and a system that records the pro and process the data the transmitter produces short pulses of microwave signals at regular intervals the radar beams from the antenna illuminates the surface gets in contact with a right angle to the motion of a plane or satellite that has radar now the radar receives the reflected signal back uh, which we normally call backscatter from different objects for example the backscatter will be higher from the house uh, and uh, the backscatter will be lower from the trees as the signal will be distorted there as we can see that the reflected signal has high energy from the house because of its surface and uh, the signal will uh, signal has low energy that is reflected back from the tree right so uh, by calculating the delay of 
sending the signal pulse and receiving the reflected echoes from different targets. The distance from radar and the location of objects can be measured. So as, uh, as a satellite or plane with radar sensor moves forward, it processes the received backscatter signals and build up a 2D image. Now the direction in which sensor moves is called azimuth while the cross path to the sensor motion is called range. The resolution of range depends on the length of a pulse while the azimuth resolution depends on the beam width. The beam width is inversely proportional to the antenna length which is also called aperture. Well, this means a longer antenna will produce a narrow beam and a high resolution. But unfortunately, we uh, have a problem. We, we cannot have long antennas in the space. So, we can synthesize by using movement of satellite or aircraft to simulate long antenna. And this is what we call synthetic aperture radar or SAR in short. This technique of using SAR help us getting high resolution with small antennas. Right, so the radar signals or pulses travels with the speed of light and can only measure a part of a signal uh, and we can only measure a part of a signal echo that is reflected back and received. Most of the radar uh, measure amplitude and phase. Amplitude is the strength of a signal or backscatter coefficient. So when we see a bright point in the image, it means the energy reflected back from this object is high. And on the other hand, uh, we find some dark areas also. Uh, it is where the energy is low. Okay, as we discussed earlier, uh, SAR image contains information about dielectric properties of objects and surfaces and also the information of the structure. Now we will talk about the parameters that impact the characteristics of a signal such as wavelength, polarization and incident angle. Right, okay. Normally, we understand the wavelength as the length from the top of one wave to the next wave. We, in radar, radar remote sensing, mostly concerned about uh, and talk about wavelength rather than frequency. It's because the length of a signal defines how the wave will interact with the surface and the object. Wavelength is inversely proportional to frequency and it is the velocity divided by frequency. In radar, signal travels with speed of light. So the velocity will be the speed of light. So if, uh, if the wavelength is short, it means the frequency of a signal will be high. And if the wavelength is long, the frequency will be less. Here in this picture, we can see some standards uh, of uh, radar bands, of different radar bands that are used in different, uh, in, in different fields. We will uh, explain and describe them a little bit more in the next slide. Now, uh, remember two things. First, the longer wavelength has more penetration. However, if uh, the wavelength is small, there will be less penetration. So, for example, um, let's take an example like if we're using L band and we are experiencing less scattered back. So that means we will see a dark surface. However, the same surface may appear bright using X band because of the interaction of small uh, uh, interaction with small objects. And these are the t uh, in this table. Uh, these are some of the examples 
of uh, the application uh, using different frequency ranges. Right, uh, polarization is is the plane of propagation uh, of the electric field of the waves. The radar waves can be transmitted and received in different polarization, no matter what is the wavelength. Normally, radar systems are designed to transmit microwave uh, either in horizontal or vertical polarization. So there can be four combinations of polarization as you can see. There are some uh, systems that have ability to collect data in all four combinations uh, that are called quad pole which can help understand extensive details of the object's structure. Right. Okay. And now the incidence angle. So, the incidence angle is the angle between radar beam and the surface. Larger the angles, uh, like, uh, okay, the larger angles will uh, will be more sensitive to Earth's surface and will penetrate less. However, the small angles will penetrate more and will result in high backscatter. Right. So that is it for this lecture. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, please. Uh, Write in the comments and we will get back to you guys. Thank you.